The magnificent coastline of Peru stretches over 2,400 kilometers along the Pacific Ocean. Despite the proximity to the equator, the waters around this part of the Pacific are cold and nutrient-rich and home to a huge variety of fish. Fishing is one of the main industries in Peru, but every three to seven years the country is hit by El Niño, the disruption of the normal ocean circulation patterns in the tropical Pacific. The normally cold waters of the Peruvian coast warm up considerably and fish supply declines dramatically. The disruptive power of El Niño is bad news for fishing, but great news for surfing. Amongst hardcore surfing fans, Peru is one of the must-visit spots if you want to ride some of the best waves in the world. However, despite the great natural conditions, Peruvian surfers have only had a small impact on the global surfing scene. The one top-class surfer to have emerged from its shores so far is Sofia Milanovic. I started surfing with my parents when I was nine. Both my parents and my older brother were already into surfing. It's in my blood. Today, Sofia from Lima is one of the best surfers in the world. Last month, she won her ninth ASP World Tour title. She was Rookie of the Year in 2003 and was crowned World Champion in 2004, the first and only winner from South America. It was well received and everybody was really happy. I think it gave the sport quite a lift. There are a lot more surfers now who are very capable and who are keen to go out there and win. Peru has 60,000 surfers, but only 12 compete internationally. There is a national surfing circuit, and the country also hosts several events on the Latin American tour. Despite improving results by Peruvian surfers, the sport still struggles to make headline news at home. Journalists know only too well what the problem is. The truth is that the majority of newspapers, radio stations and television channels don't report upon or show coverage of sports other than football. The majority of other sports, bar a few exceptions, pass completely unnoticed. Every day there are three different sports newspapers and each one of these has 16 pages. How many of those pages do you think are devoted to sports other than football? Not even a quarter of the page. It's a vicious circle. With so little exposure, it's hard for surfers to get a coveted sponsorship deal. It costs a minimum of $5,000 per year to travel to international competitions, and many talented surfers fail at the financial hurdle in pursuit of success. The government doesn't help much because surfing isn't an Olympic sport. They don't help us much with our travel expenses, so our main supporter is the private sector. It's expensive to compete at international level. It's really quite difficult. Sebastian Alarcon is one of the few successful male surfers. He surfed with Sofia when they were children but still he struggles to make ends meet. However, surfing legend Magu de la Rosa believes things are improving for a new generation of surfers. There are people now who can make a living from surfing. They have a regular income. In my time, that simply didn't exist. At some point, they started to have competitions for children. The focus was on young surfers, and that's where we discovered youngsters like Sofia. I think it's open doors that made what we have now possible. With a few companies now looking to support surfers from an early age, the future is looking brighter. And with competitions for all age groups, there are also surfers from poorer backgrounds breaking into the scene. Like Amelie Gomez, who learned to surf on one of Sofia's old boards. His success and the success of competitions for younger surfers has encouraged the government to get involved, albeit in a very limited way. 
There is a government body known as Prom Peru, and it's dedicated to promoting tourism and Peru abroad. They are starting to help a bit. They started to sponsor Sofia, but they still haven't totally realized what surfing here in Peru is all about. Sofia isn't the only surfer. There are many more surfers here. There is a whole new generation coming through. They should realize that Peru can gain more international recognition with surfing than with football. Football gets all the support, but so far no positive result has come from it. The next Peruvian surfing star is also likely to come from the Milanovic household, Matias, Sofia's younger brother. But there are so many more young talents emerging from Peru, where surfing has the potential to become their most successful sport. Well, the boom has just started. The next generations will be stronger. Also, we didn't have much support in the past. People couldn't travel much, gain experience and learn from surfers abroad. I think the best is still to come. Peruvians are clearly keen on surfing, and if the funding can be found to support this enthusiasm, then the face of world surfing could change irrevocably.